Hey everybody, welcome to the Wild Creative and Confident, a video interview series where you can learn from the most inspiring industry leaders on how you can use your passion and creativity to design the life and business of your dreams. I'm your host, Sarah Marie Thompson from wildandcreative.com, and today I have a world-traveled guest, Rachel Christensen from Meander the World, and she is a expert traveler, travel blogger, and tour guide, um, and she has been all over the world, so she has lots of exciting, uh, wonderful stories to tell us today on this interview, so hello, Rachel. Hello, Sarah. How are you? Good, and we are... Looking forward to your interview because so many people want to travel. Like, you know, they want to work so that they can save money and travel. So what has your been what has been your experience over the past few years with that? Have you were you inherited thousands and thousands of travel <laughs> Do with I <laughs> from money and I'm just an heiress going around the world? No. <laughs> uh, actually it's pretty funny because everybody always thinks you need so much cash to go traveling that uh, traveling is only something that the rich and the famous can do or you know like if I have infinite amount of time I can travel when I retire that's when I'm going to travel um, but I've been traveling pretty solidly for since I became an adult uh, always doing it on very little income most people would probably be shocked if they ever saw my tax returns and how little I've made over the years uh, <laughs> and been able to have a really nice lifestyle travel is definitely uh, not as expensive as other people think, but uh, yeah, I've been traveling for I guess like 12, 13 years now and gone all over the place and loved every minute of it and well, maybe a lie, loved most of it. What has been, you, where has been your most memorable place that you have visited? Oh, there's so many places. Um, I am a person who loves to kind of shock the system, so whether that is culturally, physically, uh, emotionally, I just love a trip that has a big impact. Uh, yeah, uh, so you can you can name a million places that way. Uh, India is one of those places where it gets under your skin, it leaves you with a mark, uh, and it's some place that you will always think about forever. Uh, I could say any of the smaller trips I've done, even trips around British Columbia and Canada, I cycled across the province with my boyfriend this summer and. It was a huge challenge, uh, and it was the most amazing feeling when we completed it and uh, when we found ourselves overwhelmed by these landscapes. So anything that really challenges me uh, and is a little bit of a struggle usually ends up being my favorite holiday. So are you more into um, beautiful scenery, or are you more into a crazy story, or what really drives your travel? Uh, for story-wise, stories usually just come, unfortunately, stories usually come the more challenging and more difficult situations you find yourself in. Uh, so you'll have definitely things that end up on my blog and website, usually those will be kind of the, oh, when things didn't go right. Uh, but yeah, for me, I will specifically seek out places in beautiful landscapes. Uh, that's where my heart is drawn to. It used to be I'd go for cultural reasons and, and go see historical sites, and I do a lot of that with my work. Uh, but for my own personal holidays, I'm, I go, I'm driven mostly to landscapes. So, I mean, normally people probably wouldn't say that traveling is a quote, quote, creative thing but really it is and then you've also taken photography with your traveling and mix the two together and created quite an online presence because of those two things thanks yeah uh yeah i mean everything's creative in the world so you can the creativity yeah it's kind of a it's kind of a gray area i guess if you're saying oh you just travel and i'll, I'll definitely get you know that those aunts and uncles that look at me and say it's just travel. <laughs> like, when are you going to grow up and get a real job? Um, but no, I mean, if you create, however you create your life, uh, if you do something you're passionate for, that could be kind of the creativity side of it. Uh, and for me, maybe I'm not a great painter. Uh, my Sarah Thompson designer there. Uh, but I can definitely. Yeah, I can definitely find ways of living a great life and, and finding the beauty in the world and sharing it through words and photographs. So I guess that's kind of the creative way of doing it. Because you've got quite a popular Instagram page too, because Instagram picked you up as um, like an Instagrammer of the week a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I got nominated, or not nominated, but I got featured uh, two years ago now as one of the Instagrammers. Uh, 
favorable people, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then I've been on a bunch of different feeds and been able to collaborate with lots of brands and destinations and magazines and publications. And uh, it's it's been kind of crazy. I mean, I was definitely the person before who has always loved taking pictures and be like, oh, go stand over there. <laughs> uh, and like boss my friends around and uh, it worked out really well. Uh, as soon as you know you, you you put yourself out into the world webs and you never know if anyone's really gonna look at it uh, but I'm continually amazed by the amount of people that will kind of see my photographs or uh, read my stories and reach out to me so yeah yeah there's always people watching even when you don't think so right creepily yes uh, yeah. you, <laughs> you get sometimes emails or something you're like how did you buy this but um or you look at your analytics and you're like what how did someone google and find me and you're like this is what people are looking for but uh yeah you can be found in a million different ways it's so strange so what does your day-to-day career kind of look like you know you do contracts right like with your traveling and tour guiding and things like that yeah so day-to-day it really changes so sometimes when i'm in canada uh, I'm kind of plotting the next adventure and doing social media and writing uh, for magazines, publications online or whatever it is. Uh, and then I'm also plotting uh, tours that I lead. So I lead tours all around the world. Uh, I do it with another company as well. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm branching out with tours for cultural and active people. Uh, I'm doing kind of mountain escapes uh, and photography trips as well. So there's there's so much on my plate that in every day it kind of changes, which is really nice. So did you always know that you would get to this point? Like, did you did you always have a feeling that you would one day, you know, be living a life that's technically like quite free? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> there was no dear diary moment where I went, like, oh, I'm going to do this. No. Uh, and I think if I would have written this down on my career path, uh, my career path person would have went, what? <laughs> so no it's been really fortunate I, I never thought I'd get here I love traveling and um, I've been so addicted to it I think since I've become an adult I spent at least six months on the road a year and I'd always dream that one day someone would actually pay me to do it um, and luckily dreams turned to reality how do you feel that you've taken your passion for your job and turned it into something that's different than what other people are doing because there is a lot of travel writers out there there's a lot of travel journalists or exactly um it's amazing how many there are I mean there's like 50 million people that write blogs uh there are 50 million or billion or 5 billion or I don't even know what it is people on Instagram there are thousands thousands of people who lead tours and I think the way to be create your own or be your own person in it and kind of like create your own path is just to be yourself so everyone has their own story, everyone has their own view, their own interests. And although it's great to be inspired by others and, and look at others and kind of take note of what's really worked for them and maybe try to apply that to yourself, I think the most important thing is really to figure out what you love and what you're interested in and share that story because uh, everyone's unique. Everyone has their own story and that's the biggest important thing in the world is being being different, be yourself. You're different. You're all naturally unique and having the same of everything's boring. So, um, that's the way I kind of look at it. And I, I know when I first started, I was like, Oh, my story's weird. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to share myself out there. And, um, but yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is find, find what works for you, what you love doing, what you're passionate for and what you're comfortable with sharing and, and creating and, uh, and push yourself a little further. And then somehow there'll be some magic in there. It's funny how I feel like over the past 10 years, and maybe this was happening even before, but I feel like almost every career out there opposed from maybe being a surgeon (laughs) or a doctor, doctor, or maybe a lawyer, like those really traditional career paths, all the careers have just kind of really got dissipated in the sense where there's so much technology and there's so much available to us now that like, you know, instantly you can be an amateur photographer and yeah. have a blog that's making money or instantly you can do this or that. Right. So yeah. it is, it is crazy, right. To think that, um, you know, so many people are really doing the same thing as you, but I mean, you really have to stand out just by sharing your own story. 
because it's yeah. not really the same as other people. Whereas before too, you're right. I mean, like I, I read an interview the other day and it said, you know, 10 years ago, the internet was for nerds. Like nobody was really on it all the time. And now everybody's on it. Like, can you imagine your life not looking at your newsfeed and finding out your information that way? Like it's completely changed everything. So yeah, you have these new career paths, like the social media gurus, the photographers that have platforms that can share, share their work and uh, writers that are being able to freelance and, and, you know, it's like, there's, there's ups and downs. Some people like the change and some people don't like the change, but I mean, there's so many more options out there. And I think having the internet and having that um, information out there, you can really, you can see a lot more. Like I, there's so many different careers I know of now that I would never have known of before. You're just, we're exposed to so much more these days. So with Wikipedia and all these uh, things have made the world a little better. <laughs> Do you think that um, it's easier in a sense now to become something more on, like as, as whatever your career path is? Um, I was talking to my musical fiance yesterday and I always have this um, conversation with him and it's, do you think that it was easier to become famous as a musician back in the day, like a few decades back opposed to now? Cause I feel like it has its pros and cons. I, and I, this would be the same for, you know, making it in travel and things like that. Right. I mean, if you were really good at something back in the day, you would stand out and there wasn't as many, but now there is so many avenues to get picked up or get famous or, or almost do it in a lighter way, right? Uh, there's yeah. so many more um, things available to you that it's almost easier to get, to get noticed in that sense. Do you think that's the same for the career that you're on too? Oh, for me, like, um, I'm not sure for musicians, I pretty much have known music, musical bone in my body, but uh, you know yeah. I mean. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can play the sax. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for me, there's been a lot more ease at finding work through online. I, I find... I guess I sort of knew that there were people who wrote about travel. Like I, I, I was aware, you know, there was section, there was magazines for that and there were newspaper, but I didn't really know the accessibility. So I think there's a little bit more ease for the amateur to kind of get their feet wet in it. And I think sometimes the best thing in the world is getting your feet wet in it, trying it out, seeing if it like, if the shoe fits and if it works for you. Um, yeah, so I, and I think for me, my own case, having the internet as and having social media platforms the way they are, that really was the key to my success. I mean, I don't think I would be where I would be or where I am without kind of my Instagram following. I think that really helped. And I think having that platform when I created my own blog and, and being able to really like be my editor, my, the creator, be the writer, the photographer, be everything on there, mm -hmm. um, it really helped kind of make make um a portfolio for myself and really curate it and test out what kind of styles I liked and before long you know people start following along and uh it's it's all your own work whereas I guess if there was no internet I would have looked at the newspaper the magazine and kind of been like your editor <laughs> <laughs> I've been here before like, uh, <laughs> like or, you know back in the day you would have like you know if you were um, a world traveler, you would have been in National Geographic, you know, and you know, oh, the, the dream, the dream little, for sure. It was a little bit more limited in that sense, right? So. Yeah, I mean, you had like your your five known publications that you would, yeah, exactly. National Geographic, Travel on Escape, um, <laughs> you have Outside Magazine, like the dream ones that I would love to be on. And hi, if you're watching, please pick me. But um, <laughs> <laughs> like, let's be honest, there was 500,000 people trying for that one article. And there still is those 500,000 people looking for that one article. Uh, they're going to pick the best of the best. And uh, they need to see kind of examples of your work. And now, whereas 10 years ago, I would have been like, here's me writing for my newspaper of like 20, 20 viewers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, like, I, I wrote one article, National Geographic, pick me. Um, now you have this huge body of work and you can try out so many things that you wouldn't get to try because, you know, I want to try video. Sure. I'll go try video. You want to try whatever it is that you're into. Um, you can just test out the waters in so many different fields that if you were under someone else that you couldn't have done. What has been your biggest achievement, um, 
with your travel career to the point where you've basically, you know, created a career that you are, are happy with? Um, my biggest achievement is always pretty much just staying alive and, uh, you know, continuing on and having more experiences afterwards. Uh, but I guess, you know, I, I love, I love continuing to go places. That's awesome. But I also love going back to places that I've been to before and sharing that with people and kind of, I love being in, in for tour guiding, you know, I love looking over at someone and they have their camera out and they're speechless. And there's that moment of just awe in them. And I love witnessing well, that. you're just like, Oh, <laughs> no, no, it's always exciting. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's always exciting. No. Um, yeah, I like seeing that. And so in my adventure side, you know, I can, you plot out what you're going to do and you think like, Oh yeah, we can totally accomplish this. And, on the way there's inevitable challenges and there's definitely those moments where I'm crying and cursing myself and saying, why did I decide to do this? And, uh, and then say you get to the peak of the mountain or you finish this crazy adventure and you're, you're sitting there and you go, wow, I did it. So every, there's always small victories. There's not like one singular ah, moment, but there's all these small victories that just kind of reaffirm that you're on the right path and you're doing what you love and you're happy about it. Do you ever feel if I sneeze, do you, do you ever feel competition in your career? Oh yeah. Um, I try not to, but like jealousy is obviously, you know, something of the world. But, um, like I said, there's like 500 million people who are bloggers. There's thousands and thousands and millions and millions, uh, of everyone who's doing similar things to me. And there's always someone who for photography takes better photos and has more followers. Uh, for writing, there's someone who understands grammar a heck of a lot better than I do and uh, writes beautiful pieces and has amazing assignments and uh, does these dream things that I would love to. Uh, but they're not me. They're not my story. Uh, they maybe have been there for 30 years. They maybe have put in a lot of time. And, you know, you we curate such a life online that we say, this is how it all is. And you never know what's going on behind the scenes. So you don't want to just say, I want what this person has because you don't know what else that person does or, um, and they're, they're, they are on a different path. They're a different person. You might be able to look at them and say, Oh wow, I really want to imitate that and have that, but it's never going to be the same. So, and if it is the same, like I said, it's boring. What is something that you do? Like, do you have a method or something that you could share with female entrepreneurs that are watching um, to help them really decide, you know, what is their true authentic calling in a sense? Is it something that you find that you kind of always know deep down that you have to, that you have to, you know, pick up along the way or can it change all the time? It can change. I think, well, for me, I change a lot. Uh, if I look back at my 20 year old self, I'm a hundred percent not the same as I was then. And your interests should change as you grow up. Um, but what your true authentic calling is, is probably like a meld of everything you've ever been interested in everything that's ever made you happy. So follow your heart, just follow what you're interested in, do what makes you feel happy. Um, and be unapologetic for what makes you happy, unless it's like a crime and it hurts other people. Then be apologetic for that. <laughs> but uh, for normal people here, um, do you know? Try different things out. If you, if you haven't found anything that's really awesome and gets your heart going and gets your gets you up in the morning really excited about it, then quit. Like um, I remember before I wanted to live like normal life, I thought that would be, you know, the best thing in the world. Oh, I'll get a nine to five and I'll wear a dress and some high heels and I'll be a real person. Um, but like, it just didn't make me happy. I was waking up every morning like, ugh, work. <laughs> you're excited uh, that first day, the second day, you're like, what have I done? Yeah, and like the only joy is if you get a paycheck. And even when you get that paycheck, you're like, this was two weeks of my life wasted. Uh. Um, <laughs> it's probably need to be edited out those. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, but like you just know, like you know, I I remember quitting a normal job and thinking, oh god, like my boss. This is legitimately what my boss said to me. Uh, well, my ex boss now. He said, I told him I want to quit. And I want to be a travel writer, and uh, he goes, Do you have anything lined up? I go, No, not really. Like I'm just gonna kind of go figure it out. He's like, Well. 
I'm sure I'll see you in three months because there's, there's no money doing what you're doing. You're never, you're never going to survive. Doing- you like put in your notebook, do not come back at all. <laughs> yeah. I like, we had like a really good laugh about it. It was just kind of funny. And I was like, you know what? I'm probably going to be starving at some point, like for sure. But, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm, I would like that moment, that freedom of following your own choice, like knowing that there was a change out there and it just felt so good. And that feeling of how good it felt was worth way more than that paycheck ever gave me. And so just follow, like try things new. Don't be like, I'm not saying go out and quit your job tomorrow because it'll feel great. Um, maybe have some kind of direction of where <laughs> you want to go. You're going to start getting hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You ruined my life. Um, no, uh, <laughs> a little off topic. Um, yeah, don't, don't, don't just go quit your job tomorrow. But once, once you know you, you're passionate about something, there's a million ways to make money. It's not a conventional way. I mean, I love traveling. I didn't think that somebody would actually pay me to tell you about my, or tell people about my stories or, you know, like I didn't think a destination would want me just to like take a picture there of me having fun and somehow give me money for that. Like that's, that's the weirdest job in the world. And then getting paid to take someone there and be like, this is, this is la di da, like whatever, whatever it is, right? Like nobody told you about those kind of things. Like mm, that's the cathedrals, mm, those pyramids. Yeah, that's pretty much my theory. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just do something that, do what feels right in your heart. If you find something that you're so excited to get up for in the morning and that really makes you happy, then look, look at different jobs that are out there, get there inspired and just try it. You're only young once, you only live once, all that kind of good stuff. It is not worth it in life to just trudge away at something and put effort into something you hate doing. Yeah. Um, So, So, okay, you have tons and tons of stories, which people can read on your blog. There's some that are explicit and some that are just very light, but... We are all grandma friendly. (laughs) (laughs) for, For somebody who is not necessarily at your level in travel, because, you know, you're really willing to, you know pitch a tent on a glacier with like hardly any any clothing and like freeze all night for the sake of you know the adventure a lot of people aren't there yet but so where would you, <laughs> what couple of places would you really say you've been to lately that are just really amazing for people that are say we're gonna say mid travelers the ones that are not the ones that are past um you know staying at a resort kind of thing and that are up for a challenge but nothing too dangerous <laughs> yeah um actually i always recommend one of the first places i've gone i always say thailand's like the easy happy middle for people uh, Southeast Asia, they've got, they've really figured out tourism. It's beautiful there. It's got nature. It's got history. It's got culture. It has delicious cuisine, um, amazing sights to see, and you can fill your day and get from A to B so easily. Uh, so I always, Thailand, Southeast Asia, so Cambodia, Vietnam, uh, are always usually pretty high up in my, in my, uh, for the soft traveler who hasn't been everywhere yet. But I mean, it depends where you've been. Like the the hardest thing I would say is people get sucked into headlines. So you see, you see headlines of this country is so dangerous, or um, you know, I don't go here because of this reason, or uh, you, you know, you just just go somewhere interesting. Like everywhere has somewhere beautiful, and like mm-hmm. I find that's that's the big thing. Like even if you can't afford to go travel, sometimes it's expensive to go somewhere. There's so much in your own backyard that's beautiful as well. So um, for the for the soft traveler who hasn't gone anywhere and scared to go anywhere or whatever, just um, like start off in your own backyard and then venture overseas and literally everywhere in the world has somewhere to go. Where are your next destinations that you have planned for at least this year? Uh, so for this year, I go to Brazil, Argentina, and Chile to start, uh, and then I'm not too sure where I'll head for April, but uh, probably Central America, so maybe Guatemala, Nicaragua, um, El Salvador area. Not too sure yet. Uh, it has to be confirmed. I'm pretty last minute with all that. Uh, and then in the summer, I'm going to cycle with two kayaks up to Alaska. And then afterwards in the fall, I'll probably go to Europe. Uh, spend a few months in Europe and then probably back down in South America at the end of the year. Well, Maybe. I don't know. It's all subject. <laughs> <laughs> for people that are, you know, they're like planning for their one trip a year. 
<laughs> you know, that they're really excited about it and it's like a huge thing for them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> stepping yeah. on their toes here. Yeah. <laughs> I just listed off way too many places. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I travel a lot. So my schedule is pretty. It's a very cool lifestyle and it's exactly what you've wanted to, to create, right? And you wouldn't yeah. be in those places if you didn't want to. So, yeah, no, I love the places like um, Patagonia is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And I pretty much just sit there with every day with my jaw hanging and just so excited and pinching myself and can't believe I'm there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a hectic schedule. There's not, not everyone's for it. Six months at least of your life. I mean, last year I spent, I would say about 10 months on the road, you know, living out of a suitcase and that has its ups and its downs. And that meant I didn't do laundry a lot. <laughs> See, a lot of people can't do that part. They can't, they can't rough it in that sense. Yeah. Um, okay, so where can people find you? If they go on your website, it's meander-the-world.com. Yeah, so that's my blog. Uh, if you go to my Instagram, uh, it's at meanderthe-world.com. And I'm also on Facebook um, and Twitter. I don't really use, I'll be honest. Um, but yeah, mostly on Instagram is where I, where I publish most of my day-to-day -day things. And then I do kind of roundups on my trips and kind of photo, photo essays and anything I've published out in the rest of the world, I kind of gravitate back towards my website as well. Great. Yeah. So everybody definitely check out Rachel's um, Instagram. The photos are inspiring and beautiful and um, they're straight out of a magazine. And, and truthfully, you take a lot of them with your phone, right? Yeah, actually, the funny thing is when I first got started getting contracts for photography, I was just using like the worst phone ever. And like, this is, this is the truth. Like you don't need to have the best equipment to get into something. Like sometimes I know startups with a lot of businesses, it's really daunting because you need this, 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 and this, and this. And um, to hone your craft, your creative craft is, I mean, you don't need the best of the best. It's, it's really just your own personal take on things. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was using this like, terrible phone it was like two megapixel camera I don't even know if it could be considered a smartphone and uh that was basically basically the start of all my photography with online um of course I did have cameras and but that's what people were that's what you know magazines and and whatnot were checking you out with right we were just yeah. photographs so just start. yeah initially yeah initially it was just it was just just going out there like having a phone in the back of pocket and I'm like oh that looks nice like nothing was set up, uh, which I think a lot of people get really confused by. Granted, there's a ton of people on Instagram and, you know, there, there's the true professional photographers out there that are scouting out locations six days in advance and flying there for the shot. And yeah. like they're waiting, they're doing a lot of the post-production photography or editing online. And uh, that shot, you know, is two weeks worth of work, or maybe it's a month worth of work or whatever it is. There are those people that are out there and I commend them for their dedication. Uh, but yeah, my photography style is pretty much me going around, living my life, having a great adventure uh, and being like, oh, well, it's fine. <laughs> okay, one last question. Uh, what makes you wild, creative, and confident? Uh, wild, because I'm a lady of the wild. Uh, my, my wild <laughs> hair that I haven't brushed in about a month. No. Uh, <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, a week or so. Uh, no, wild, because... Hmm. Um, I like to live life in the wilderness and you can never, never know what I'm going to do. Their life, I do change my life quite a bit. And I know that like, that's quite scary for some, uh, creative because again, I change my life and I make sure that, uh, whatever, whatever path I'm leading at the moment, there's probably some creative way to make sure I'm going to survive. Uh, <laughs> and then confident because you change your life. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, because you know, I you I know who I am. I'm happy with who I am, and um, I'm out there. I guess <laughs> most unconfident answer. <laughs> Well, everybody, definitely check out Rachel. Um, all of her information will be by her bio. She's an extremely interesting travel blogger, so definitely check out her blog. Read some of her stories. There are some that are, like, incredibly funny on there. I remember, like, reading them just, like, laughing. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. And, um, and look for more to come because uh, she will be traveling more and more and um, more stories are going to come up. So, okay. anyway, thank you for uh, watching this one, and we'll see you again next time. Great. I want to say thanks to you, Sarah, for having me. Uh, I look forward to all your posts, your positive reinforcement that goes, I can take on the day. <laughs> and, uh, thanks very much for having me. And thanks for doing all the work that you do as well. Thank you. Bye, everyone.
Bye. <laughs>